Well, welcome back to the Azure podcast. This is episode number 456 being recorded on the 22nd of March, 2023 with special guest Ricardo Villarreal. I'm Sajid and on Teams with me, uh, we have Evan and of course our special guest, Ricardo, who we're gonna get to in just a minute. Uh, but before that, uh, let's just catch up on some of the news in the Azure space. Evan, I believe you had a few things to uh, discuss today. Yeah. Um, so a, a couple will be carryovers in the future, um, but we'll, we'll start with um, so Azure for Operators. This is actually from a couple weeks back at Mobile World Congress. They had a whole bunch of announcements um, about, and I forget the name of their new product because they they changed the new the name again, um, but. They've released a whole bunch of capabilities there. Um, we had, um, uh, now his name escapes me. Uh, I should have looked this up before, my bad, I didn't, it's left my head. But we had somebody, we had one of the leaders of the, um, Sean Heckel, that's who was on, um, to talk about Azure for Operators about a year, year and a half ago or more. Um, things have changed substantially. We'll get him to come on and talk about all the changes in that space, but this will point you to some of the announcements. Um, the other really nice one, being a networking person, I love this one. Um, we continue to evolve the connection troubleshooting in the um, capabilities so that you can test connectivity to your various resources. Um, I, there's both, I believe it's PowerShell CLI and portal capabilities here. Um, this one, I just, I sort of find it I ironic. Um, so Azure Static Web Apps now have the ability to interact with databases, um, which just, seems wrong with what you call a static mm. web app but it, it's yeah, absolutely it, it is still static at that point in time i, I don't know I, I, <laughs> yeah exactly um, i think we're blending right um but but again that that capability is out there allows you to do um rest apis in and out um, of the database using the static web apps um the this feature i had to read it twice so we have what we call performance plus for azure desks and what this means is um, you can basically go even faster than normal. You get more IOPS, more, more speed. Um, and it's just a feature that you get with new disks uh, of a certain class um, in Azure. Um, again, it's just about making disks better, but I guess at some point you got to name it something different. So it's performance plus. Um, and then the other two things um, for uh, PostgreSQL, um, one is that we have these, we've published this, there's this really neat capability of Azure Monitor called Workbooks, which you can in essence drag and drop things on and build sort of custom dashboards. We've released some ones for um, Azure PostgreSQL, um, which allow you to sort of take some base things and then customize it to your environment. It gives you a really nice perspective, some nice dashboards on your workloads. And then going along with that, we've released some metrics for PG Bouncer, which is a really common connection pooling layer that you see in the uh, PostgreSQL world. Um, so now the metrics and everything are gonna start streaming into Azure Monitor, just like all the other metrics um, as well. Just giving you more visibility into the way that ends up working, right? Cause we now have that managed PG Bouncer capability. So now we're gonna have the metrics that go with it. So so a nice, nice roundup of things across um, different services and features. Indeed, thanks. And you mentioned the uh, mobile world, world conference, mobile, uh, World Congress. Conference, I believe. Congress. Congress, I think. And yeah. uh, I believe our special guest uh, is also going to talk about that uh, soon. But uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, turn the mic over to Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us what you do at Microsoft, what your passion is in, you know, in in the, the cloud space here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sujit. Thank you, Ivan. Ivan, uh, both. Um, so, like you said, my name is Ricardo Villarreal, and um, I am part of Azure for Operators. Uh, by the way, I, the name you were looking for, Evan, was uh, uh, Nexus. It used to ah, be called yes. AODS. Yeah. It used to be called you AODS. You jumped in and saved me. Come on. Thanks Maybe. a lot, Ricardo. I was waiting. I, I wasn't so sure about the format. <laughs> Should I jump in? <laughs> yeah, same team, uh, different product. That's not my product, but I, 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 know the, I know the product, obviously. And uh, so I am part of Azure for Operators. I am a product manager. The product I am managing, the, the product that we are building in my team is called Azure Programmable Connectivity. And we announced a private preview at MWC. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, the, you know, the kind of obvious question is, you know, when 
we've been using Azure networks for, for, for a while now. I mean, Evan's our resident expert on Azure networking. And uh, I didn't know we could we could we could program the network in some way so it kind of has all sorts of connotations in my head i don't know evan what do you think <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sort of embarrassed that i spend time in the azure for operators world i spend time in networking and i didn't know about this combination of, of the two uh, but but yeah i mean ricardo what, what do you mean when we say programmable connectivity let's just start with that piece yeah these are um it basically means uh um applications uh, interacting with the network via network APIs. So there's a lot of evangelization that has to happen. You're right. I mean, so many, many of the developers that we are talking, actually the great majority of developers that we are talking to, they they are they are not aware of the network uh, APIs. Uh, we, we tell them, and they say, what is that? And we have to explain it. We have to evangelize a lot. Some other developers are quite advanced, actually, and they require them uh, for their uh, applications to really either work or to provide a way better experience. So what we are talking is uh, there are these uh, mobile uh, operators. Uh, I'm talking the AT&T's, Verizon's, um, uh, T-Mobile's uh, of the world. They are exposing certain capabilities of their, of their networks via these APIs. Uh, one example that I can give you is, uh, I guess, I can give you the example of the most typical APIs that they are exposing right now, which are one, for example, is a discovery API. It is an API call that you can make into the into into the network, and then you can understand all the different points that you can connect to, especially the MEC points that you can connect to, and it gives you the different latencies for each one, so you can make decisions on that. And even if you are um, a device, you can even see, oh, okay, uh, I am a, I, ha I have these make points in Azure, I have these make points in the in the operator, for example, right? Some some make points uh, be belong to Azure Public Make, for example, or they belong to the operator. That's a discovery one. Another one, I'm I'm just gonna give you three examples, so I don't I don't bore you with the whole list. Another example is a quality on demand API. So what that means is um, you have a, a device. You can make an API call into the network, and then you get a differentiated uh, uh, traffic. Your traffic is prioritized, so that helps a lot when you, when your um, uh, application, uh, the, the connectivity of your application is critical for it to provide the, the, the right experience, and then you are in a, in a congested network. So let's say you are when you're in a network uh, with no congestion, you don't need it. You don't need to pay more for that. But if it happens that your application, uh, the connectivity is really critical for work, for it to work and you're in a congested place, you can make that API call and then your traffic is prioritized. Uh, the last one I'm just gonna give is location. Uh, there's a location API. How is it different from GPS? This one is because the location of the, of the device is given by the network, by a combination of technologies in the network. And then you can get the, the location. And sometimes it is actually very, very accurate down to one or two centimeters. So for certain use cases, it is very good. Also because it works indoors, because it is based on the network. And also because uh, you can do the query uh, centralized. You don't, you don't, you don't um, rely on the device to make a, a GPS uh, query, right? It is you have a centralized place, you query, uh, your devices connected to your network, and you know the exact the, the exact location. So it's basically that is uh, new capabilities that these operators are making available to developers for enhancing the applications. Two two, two questions, Ricardo. One, um, uh, let, let's define MEX for for this audience because I think there's a lot of people that aren't you know aware of that what that means from an edge computing um, perspective. And then the 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 follow up would be. Um, when I hear you describe this, sort of where where my head goes is, this is very similar. It, is can I think about this like I'm defining an interface for some API, some you know you know find my location, whatever the API is, and I, if I want that to run the same on Windows or Linux, the implementation may be totally different, but my interface that me as a programmer is going to write, if I'm going to write a portable application, I don't really want to have to worry about the differences between the two. Is that sort of the analogous thing here, where I don't have to worry about what well, am I on? you know, uh, mobile network provider one versus mobile network provider two, like, and I can just write my code and my code just works. And the this abstraction layer that you're talking about handles 
sort of figuring out the deltas for me? Is that the right way to think about it? It is, it is, it is. So let me first answer the, your first question and then the second one. Oh, the second one, by the way, you were spot on, 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 on what okay. we are trying to solve. What is the problem okay. we are trying to solve? But um, on, on the first one, well, mostly for these, when I when I say make, I'm talking about public make point. A public make okay. point, it's um, a smaller, uh, especially for Azure, the public make uh, service that we have is smaller versions of our regions, right, of our cloud. That, But this is smaller version is just one or two racks. Uh, with some services, uh, it's a limited list of services, but they, they, they have GPUs, they have obviously the VMs, they have containers, they have um, most of the most important uh, services. These uh, smaller versions are located within the operator network, right next to it. Okay, okay. It's a Azure, okay. it's managed by Azure. It's a Azure. Okay. If you're a developer, it's going to look to you like another region, but it's just going to be called Public Make Dallas, for example, or Public Make Atlanta. But it's going to be right there in the network of the of the of the of the, of the, of the operator. That's what, okay. what I, I mean. So we're pulling I, a little bit of chunk of Azure compute or Azure resources and pulling those right next to the mobile operator at that point. Exactly, and for some, okay. it, it makes sense for some use cases, right? For some others, yeah. you don't you don't need it. Okay. But for some others, uh, it's critical. The, that latency, those uh, fifty milliseconds or hundred milliseconds that you are saving, are critical for your application to to to, to work uh, properly. Yep. Okay. So now let me get, go to the second. Um, what is it that we are trying to solve? I guess you, you were actually um, spot on, on on the way you presented it. So these operators, they are exposing all of these APIs, right? Some of them are exposing uh, the APIs in a similar fashion. There are some efforts to standardize how these APIs are exposed, but then um, uh, not all of them are exposing them in the same way. And then there are other types of networks also, right? There are satellite networks or there are wired networks which uh, have very different APIs. Totally different. If that you're point, a developer, yeah. if you're a developer, what you want is all of that to be transparent to you. To be, I mean, I just want some network capabilities and I just want to write code once. I don't want to write code for uh, AT&T and then I don't want to write code for Verizon differently or for T-Mobile differently. And then um, I don't want to have to understand also to be a network engineer in order to do all of that, right? I just want all of that presented to me in the same way I am used to consume uh, cloud services. And that is okay. exactly the product that we are developing, the Azure Programmable Connectivity product, which is a platform that goes in between. It does basically two things. It unifies, which is exactly that. I mean, I'm taking all of the different APIs from all of the different operators, and I'm just presenting one interface, right, to the developer. Mm -hmm. And the second one, uh, it abstracts. So the way we present it to the developer is also in the way that they are used to consume these services, right? So they can they can consume them. We are still uh, developing the product, but um, eventually uh, they are going to consume these APIs from the same Azure portal. So just okay. like you okay. spin up a VM and, and, and then you uh, spin up some services, same experience for you to access these APIs, right? Gotcha. So Ricardo, I'm trying to think. So uh, you know, uh, the writing software is uh, something I do on a regular basis, and I'm trying to kind of wrap my head like how I would leverage one of these APIs, right? Uh, so uh, when I hear APIs and running it on the edge, so this is an application that I have written that is running, let's say, in a container in one of these mechs, as you call them, right? Uh, and and now let's say that application is written in Java. I don't know, you know, or or, or on Node.js or or Golang or something. Uh, and is that where the APIs are accessed? I'm trying to I'm trying to understand where I'm going to be accessing these APIs. Like where where does the code to access these APIs actually run? Yes. Uh, well, just also one one clarification. When when I mentioned about the the public mix, is because. For some of the APIs, it makes sense, right? The, especially the discovery API. It makes sense that you can understand all of these public uh, MEC points. But yep. these APIs are not restricted to applications running on the public MEC. They could be running anywhere, right? For some for some use cases, uh, it's just a regular uh, cloud application, right? Uh, running on the on the on, on the cloud. So, so it's, not, it's, it's not just for 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 uh, applications running on the MEC. Now, where are these APIs running? So these APIs are um, exposed by the operators. So they have uh, a proxy 
server, right? Or they have a, an exposure gateway. Um, they are using different, different names. So it's actually the network, right? That's where the APIs reside. They are exposing something actually called service APIs. Uh, so the network APIs are part of the operator network. They are transformed a little bit, and then they expose to the world something they are calling service APIs. Those service APIs are consumed by by our product, by Azure Programmable Connectivity. We are the ones connecting to that. We have an API gateway running on Azure that is connected to those APIs. And, and the way it happens is if you are um, a developer, then what you have to do is you have to modify your application to access this API gateway. Now, for you to make that this modification easy, we have an SDK, right? An SDK that you can tap on. We have quick starts that can show you. Uh, how to do it. So you have your application running on the cloud, and uh, you modify that application in order to make that connection to our API gateway with our using our SDK. So you can make calls into our API gateway. So you, you talk, if you're the developer, your application is making the call into our Azure Programmable Connectivity Gateway, right? Our APC gateway. And then we are calling the API from the operator. Can you uh, give me a use case uh, that a developer will, will typically use, like maybe a sample, you know, uh, uh, application scenario that would best uh, describe what you're saying here? Totally. So I'll give you one for quality on demand. So these APIs, by the way, they are very different and they um, enable also very different use cases, right? So let me give you one for quality on demand, which is the one where you can prioritize the traffic of your devices over other. Uh, devices, right? So we are working with a company called Halo.car. Uh, this is actually a very, very interesting uh, company. What they do is they rent cars by the hour. Very similar to, I forgot the name, I guess that Zipcar. These cars yeah. that you can go yeah. and, you can, and yeah. you can, you know where they are, you go pick yeah. the car and then you drop it, right? So you, you, you need a car for th three hours. The big difference with Halo.car is that the car is delivered to you. But the way it is delivered to you, so you have your app, I need a car for three hours, and I am here. So they are gonna deliver the car to you, but the, it's gonna be uh, um, driven remotely. So it's not autonomous driving, but there is someone sitting in a desk uh, controlling all of these cars, and they drive the car remotely to you. So they obviously, connectivity is so important, right? And uh, especially latency. Just a little, just a hair. Yeah, just, just a little, <laughs> like if, they, if it happens that the latency is not what you were expecting, you're just gonna crash. No, no problem, yeah. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> so that's exactly what's happening, right? If you don't have um, very good connectivity, you crash. And uh, basically because, because of the latency problem, right? So this is very important. So this company operates, actually they are in, in Las Vegas and that's where uh, they are doing most of their, um, of their operation. Application can be smart. Uh, we're still working on what is the best way to kick off this call into the API. It could be location because they have all of these metrics. They know the places that their cars go to and uh, where the connectivity is not optimal because of, of the metrics, because of the history. So they can have this uh, logic created into their application. They say, oh, whenever I go into this location, I'm gonna make an API call so that my traffic is differentiated. Obviously, eventually these, these operators, they're gonna charge for, for, for this, right? They, they're gonna charge you for, because your traffic is being prioritized. And uh, and basically that's, 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 that's a perfect example. They only use quality on demand when they are in these places where they know there is uh, congestion in the network. When they go to a regular place, they don't need quality on demand. They don't need prioritized traffic. And and just so I understand, this is uh, is this primarily involving like a five G network, uh, or does it match? Does it does it like the car in this example? The car would be on a cell network, right? Somewhere, yep. uh, and is that does it have to be a five G network? No, it can be also LTE, LTE okay. or five G. That's that's those are where where the APIs are being are being uh, exposed. And the right? and the, and the prioritization prioritization will be between that. The car and the nearest cell tower is that is that what we're talking about? Uh, yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're, it, it it goes it, it is in the in the network of the operator. It is not necessarily all the way right now. It's not end to end right now, all the way to uh, where the application is running. 
And right. that's going to depend on how uh, the developer architected the the, the 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 application. That's where you can probably start combining different APIs because maybe if it is so important for you, you are a developer and you know about this um, public MEC point, right? And your application is running right at the network and you are using both APIs. One because you know you want, you are going to connect to that public MEC point, and the other one is because you are going to prioritize the traffic going to this public MEC point, right? But uh, if you are running on the cloud, it's not end-to-end -end yet to all the way to the cloud, right? Yeah, but it sounds like we could use that performance plus uh, boost <laughs> over here, right? Uh, to boost I the track. I was going to say, you, uh, <laughs> I somebody, somebody's starting to get unhappy. So I, 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 if, if I drop, it's because uh, my, my grandson has decided he's just not happy with me recording today. Um, the it, it is, um, it, Ricardo went out. So let's say I want to use one of these APIs. Do, it sounds like I definitely will need an Azure subscription. Do I also need to buy some equivalent from the mobile provider under the covers, or is that abstracted underneath the Azure piece? So, right, it's, it is the two models. Right now, we are going to support the two models. Yes, you're right. You need, um, uh, right now, we are working, uh, the application has to be running on Azure, but we are also okay. working on applications that are not going to be running on Azure. That is something that is, right now, we are, evaluating um, and and I believe we're going to move in that direction also that the application doesn't have to be necessarily running on Azure that is one thing but right now it, it is Azure now the second thing is um, what do I need from the operator right uh, right now we are in a private preview uh, stage where we have a connection to six operators right uh, right now we are managing the the credentials we are helping whatever developer is participating in this private preview program we are managing the credentials for them with the operator right and uh, so we make uh, the connection to the operator uh, eventually when this becomes a general uh, when we go to general availability the two scenarios that we are still um, evaluating is one where we um, can take care of the credentials and we can take care of the billing and all of the contracting for the developer. So the developer only has to talk to Azure and then we do whatever we have to do technologically and also contractually with the, with the operator, right? So you just have your Azure ID. And with that, uh, you, you, you don't have to worry about the credentials with, with the operator to access these APIs, right? Now, the other scenario we're still working on, and that's because of some operators wanted that some one way and some operators wanted the other way, is where you do the contracting of the API services directly. I mean, when I say you, I mean the developer. The developer makes the contracting of the API uh, services with the operator. And then when they access our service in Azure, uh, they, they just have to enter the credentials, right, that they already obtained from the operator. The reason is um, operators, they are right now evaluating both scenarios. There are some operators that they say, no, we want you, Azure, to take care of that. That is going to give a way better experience to the developer and, uh, and uh, if, if, compared to, 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 to uh, working with, with both the operator and, and the Azure. But then there are other operators that they say, no, I want to continue having the relationship with the developer. I want to lose that connection to the developer. So I need the developer also talking to me, and then uh, and, uh, I'm going to give the developer the, the credentials, right? And then they are going to have to enter them in, in, into, your, into your service. So right now, for the private preview, we take care of the credentials. Eventually, when we go uh, live with general availability, we might uh, support both. Both options. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, so you said uh, that you made this major announcement at the Mobile World Congress, right? And uh, essentially the private preview of the Azure programmable connectivity was announced over there. So congratulations on that. Uh, how, uh, like, you know, if uh, I believe we've already got a few elite developers uh, on here, how do other developers uh, who are interested in this, uh, these kind of applications get access to this private preview? What's the recommended approach to for them to, to get access to this system? So, so let me tell you very, very high level what the program is and then how um, anyone can, can, can apply for it, right? So first is basically the program is that, that you get access to this solution that I've been talking about. It's in private preview. So that's what the program is about. Now it is free for developers. 
for three or six months, three months with the possibility for, for a, uh, another three months extension, right? And that starts from the moment that they sign up. I mean, the, the ones they are, they are accepted into the program and, and they are giving access to, to, to the solution. So that's basically what the program is about. Uh, there is no cost. Uh, we are even going to provide some Azure credits so they can even uh, develop in Azure. Uh, if, they're, if they're developing on Azure already, well, they can use those credits um, for, 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 for further development. If they are not on Azure, they can use the credits to start developing on Azure, right? And then the operators are not going to charge for the, for the API calls. They might charge for the subscriber line. Uh, you obviously have to have a connection to one of these six uh, operators. By the way, the operators are um, in North America. We are working with AT&T and T-Mobile in the U.S. and in, North, in Canada with Rogers. And in Europe, we are working with Deutsche Telekom and with Telefonica. Uh, Deutsche Telekom in Germany, Telefonica in Spain, and then in Asia with uh, Singtel in Singapore. So basically, uh, what has to happen is that it's a developer that is a customer of one of these six uh, operators, and then uh, they want to use they want to make use of one of these APIs, um, and then uh, they basically can start playing with it. That's what the program is about. For free, you can play with these APIs and you can try to enhance your applications using it. So how can they get access? I guess the the, the best way is they can go to the a blog that we that we that we created. In the blog, everything that I've been talking about is explained. So if you are not taking notes, don't worry. Everything is <laughs> written in the blog. <laughs> there, there are videos to some uh, uh, POCs, some proof of concepts that we did with, with uh, some of these uh, operators that I just mentioned. And then there is also a link to apply to the program. So the, 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 the address, the web address for, for this blog is aka.ms slash a P C blog. A P as in Peter, C as in Charlie blog. One word. A P C is for Azure Programmable Connectivity. So if you go here, you can see the blog and you can apply for the program. You can see the videos. That's great. Thank you. And you said these are primarily in the form of APIs today, right? That they can access. So the APIs are they uh, language uh, agnostic? Like what's the form of the APIs, or are they just REST endpoints that they connect to? How how does that surface? We have we have um, in um, we have uh, so so the SDK. What they can do is they can they get access to an SDK right now that they that they can that they can use. We have the quick starts for that. Uh, it's in different languages. It's in Python, in in, in okay. Go, in uh, uh, in C, uh, and, and uh, so they and I think there's another language also that we support for languages. But it's basically that you have the quick starts, you have the the, the, the different languages that you that you can use the, the the SDK in, and then you can basically start making use of these uh, APIs from these six operators. So I guess what 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 the developer requires is, if you are a developer that is already very familiar with uh, network APIs, then you should immediately apply, right? And 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 you can play with APIs from these six operators from one interface. If you're a developer that a network APIs concept is still novel to you, uh, what I would recommend is first understand what the network APIs are. What is it that you could do with them? How can they enhance your application? Which is a little bit the, along the lines that I've been mentioning here. But try to understand that better. And if you believe a network API is something that you can use to enhance your application, then apply to the program. Uh, when you apply to a program, you have to describe obviously the, the use case, right? That how you would be yeah. using the network APIs. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you so much, Ricardo. I think this is uh, wonderful information. I, I can tell you, I had never heard of this until this. Uh, <laughs> we had a discussion here, so so this is all brand new for me and uh, very exciting. Some of the use cases that are, could, could come out of these uh, APIs uh, certainly compelling. Uh, you know, as we go forward, especially with uh, the uh, with 5G becoming more popular and edge computing and whatnot, all these kind of options uh, uh, just just help, right? I think developers have to get familiar with these APIs to take advantage uh, of all of that. And the use case that you provided with that rental car company is 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 really good. So uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, thanks for for coming on the show, uh, Evan. Uh, uh, you any questions for Ricardo before we wrap up here? Yeah, no questions. Um, this is great. This gives me another. I actually got to go spend some more time on this. 
Um, uh, but I, I did want to correct. Um, I, I said earlier um, the the gentleman that was on our show was Sean Hackle, um, just so I don't get yelled at later by our audience um, for screwing that up. But uh, you know, I think we're I think we're actually going to have him back in a couple of weeks to talk about the Nexus announcements. Um, you know, a little while back. So uh, we're going to continue this conversation for sure. Azure for Operators is becoming a thing, Ricardo. Right? We've had a couple of years now where it was. We, we knew it was going to become something. It just wasn't quite there. We had to do a bunch of, of ground level work, but now it's starting to turn into a bunch of real things that people can use. So it's great to see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, thank you guys for having me. And thank you for the interest in yeah, the thanks for coming. and in National for Operators in general. Thank you. Thank you.